This is Political Forum for Wednesday, February 5th, 2014. Uh, we welcome today as our special guest, Alderman Howard Brookins, Jr. from the 21st Ward. Thanks for joining us again. Well, on, thanks for on having Political me. Forum. Good to be here today. Uh, I'm Rod Joy, a board member here at Can TV. Uh, Political Forum is a live, interactive call-in program designed to connect you, the viewer, with your elected officials. Uh, over the next 25 minutes or so, uh, we'd like to provide you an opportunity to learn more about uh, Alderman Brookins and his views on some of the most pressing challenges and opportunities facing our city. Uh, above all, this program is about fostering a strong sense of civic engagement uh, in Chicago. Uh, your voice, uh, your concerns, your views are a big part of the program. Uh, we'd like to invite you to call in with your questions and comments for the Alderman. Uh, you can join us at 312 738 1060. That's 312-738-1060. Uh, Alderman, welcome back. Oh, thanks for having me. Uh, for uh, our, our viewers who may be meeting you for the first time, uh, can you briefly introduce yourself and say a few words about the 21st Ward? Oh, sure. I'm Alderman Howard Brookings of the 21st Ward. The 21st Ward is on the south side of Chicago. Uh, the new ward boundaries are from 79th on the north and 99th on the south the Dan Ryan on the east, and a little bit past Ashland. It depends on the area that you're in. Great. And uh, if given a choice to talk about Chicago politics or Chicago weather, I usually always pick politics. <laughs> but the weather's been so bad, let's start with the snow. And how are, how are folks doing out there in the 21st Ward? Well, they're like me, and they're tired of the snow. And, and, and it, it has been... Um, just too much uh, and, and too often. Uh, but with that said, the majority of the complaints that we're having in our area, not necessarily the side streets being shoveled, but we are having a lot of requests and a lot of complaints that the alleys are impassable. Uh, one of the things that I, I tell the residents is that Streets and Sands has a policy that they will not plow the alleys. And the reason is that with respect to their uh, pl uh, blade, it will push the snow either to the left or to the right. And so if the plow is going down the alley, plowing your alley, then half of the residents are going to be complaining that the city uh, snowed them in by pushing all the snow up against their garage. What they do is they send uh, the garbage trucks down the alley to kind of track down the uh, snow so that the cars are a little bit passable. I wish there was a better way, but there there is not at this point. And so we just have to unfortunately deal with it. Um, but if you do have questions or issues regarding the snow, you can call my office at 773-881-9300, 773-881-9300. Note that they only do side streets after all of the main thoroughfares are passable. It is at that point that I can have a little bit of control until... Uh, the ward superintendent to send a truck down a particular side street, et cetera. And Alderman, you're a, a native Chicagoan. You you uh, 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 born and raised here. Absolutely. Uh, it, it's hard for me to remember a winter that's been worse than this winter. No, you'd have to go a long ways back, and I I, I do remember the blizzard of '79. It was one of the uh, few times that we got days off of school. Although I can swear as a kid, I remember it snowing more often than it has been over these past 10 years. I think that we have been blessed with respect to the weather, uh, it being a little bit warmer. I, I remember playing golf one year every month, it seemed like, that we had a day that was 50 or 60 degrees. But this uh, year, the weather has been brutal. And so please take care of yourself and, and, and dress accordingly. Terrific. Uh, one topic uh, I wanted to get into is the minimum wage. Uh, uh -huh. President Obama, in his State of the Union address, uh, urged the raising of the, the minimum wage, and I think there's been some recent action in the uh, Chicago City Council uh, in support of increasing the minimum wage to 1065 at, at the state level. Can you say a few words about sure. it? Sure. It was almost, uh, I believe it was unanimous, and everybody supported that uh, resolution to pay a uh, a higher minimum wage. One of the things that uh, President Obama did by executive order was to order that all of the contractors who did business with the federal government pay their workers at least 10 10 an hour. And I'm proud to say that uh, here in the city of Chicago, we already had an ordinance like that. So if you do business with the city of Chicago, 
I believe that uh, the amount that you have to pay is eleven dollars and sixty-five cents an hour. Perfect. So uh, we think that this will help um, some of the people who are out there struggling, who work hard every day. I, I think that if you do work hard, that you should be compensated for that. Um, and you know, I, I understand some of the arguments to the to the contrary, uh, but I think that it, that is time that the minimum wage in Illinois is higher than a lot of places uh, our neighbors, but it's still not enough to uh, support uh, yourself, let alone the family. This is Political Forum, a live interactive call-in program. We invite your questions and comments for Alderman Howard Brookins of the 21st Ward. I think we have a caller on the line. Sure. Caller, are you there? Hi. Hi, I sure am. Hi, Alderman. How are you? Very well, thank you. Um, I wanted to get your thoughts on an article I recently read in Crane's, I guess it's sort of under Mayor Daley and a different budget era in Chicago, we, residents could expect snow removal on side streets about, you know, 24 hours after a snow. But I've told sort of with the new budgetary constraints, decisions have to be made and snow removal um, budget, you know, has been reduced. So I wanted to know sort of what, in your opinion, should be the new normal in terms of waiting for snow to be cleared from your side street or from your street. I, I think that the mayor is, is, is trying to get it right. I don't know that we're there yet. Uh, there will probably be more money in next year's budget with respect to the snow. Uh, if you remember, and everybody uh, can remember Michael Belandic being run out of office based on the poor job that he did with respect to the snow. I think Mayor Daley, uh, learning that lesson very well, said that never will I be stuck uh, um, or caught not shoveling the snow and so they went over I mean literally they went overboard with respect to uh, the snow uh, we got we got spoiled to some extent uh, but with that said I don't know that it is right yet I think that we ought to do a better job uh, with respect to the side streets a little quicker um, but our costs are out of control our, our, our uh, and, and the city just doesn't have the money we burn through uh, the money we had in our rainy day fund uh, back during the recession. We haven't recovered with respect to that. Uh, if you believe the economic indicators and that things are getting better, then maybe uh, the city will have more money and that we can devote more money and resources towards that. And this is the eighth snowiest winter on record in Chicago, and it's only going to get worse. Uh, and when you turn on the TV and, and look at what happened in Atlanta, Georgia, oh. where three inches of snow literally shut down the city and caused havoc on their highways, uh, you know, I guess the, the flip side of that argument is that it, it pays to, to be ready. Right, absolutely. Uh, and, and also note that since we're almost out of salt, uh, it's going to cost us even more money to truck salt in. Normally we get salt in in big barges. Now uh, to get salt to replenish our supply, we would have to truck it in by... Uh, uh, semis. Uh, this is Political Forum, a live interactive call-in program. We invite uh, your questions uh, and comments for Alderman Howard Brookins, Jr. of the 21st Ward. Uh, earlier this week, or in fact earlier today, I think the City Council approved Mayor Emanuel's uh, proposed borrowing plan. Um, as, as an alderman, how do you balance uh, short-term needs versus the long-term interests of, of the city? Well, I was not a finance major in college. However, I, I do believe the arguments that, one, uh, we were able to refinance some of our debt at a lower rate. I think everybody understands that. If you have a house and you have a higher interest rate, say 5 or 6%, and the current interest rates are 4 if you can uh, refinance uh, that debt, you actually save money. Uh, the city does need money for infrastructure, and we're going to need a lot of money for infrastructure. Uh, the potholes are off the chain, uh, so to speak, throughout the city. So there will be a need for a lot of money to do a lot of street repairs uh, this upcoming spring and summer. So, uh, you know, we, we do need the money. We do need to repair our infrastructure. Uh, and I don't think the, the citizens will stand for anything less. I think we have another caller on the line. Caller, are you there? Uh, yeah, you mentioned spending on infrastructure. I think I remember the mayor saying something about starting an infrastructure trust, and just kind of wondering if that's gone anywhere, if they're still sort of working on that, or 
that's how they move in city council. No, with respect to the infrastructure trust, and I guess that's a good call. There has been some movement on that. There have been, I, I, the number 13 seems to pop into my mind, but it, it could be more uh, projects or less. So there are several projects that will be repaired with respect to the infrastructure uh, trust. Some of them are retrofitting libraries uh, with uh, new, more efficient lighting, et cetera. There's some other projects like that where the anticipated savings by doing the repair will be the money that they will use to pay back the uh, infrastructure trust. So it is moving. It, it, it didn't seem to take off as fast as I think that the mayor had hoped. But I uh, look forward to certain projects. And, you, you know, the project will have to fit kind of within that niche that it has to be able to pay itself back based on whatever uh, the infrastructure repair is. I think we have another caller on the line. Caller, are you there? Yeah. I, I, this is, is about the CTA. Sure. Does the city or the, or the aldermen have any authority or say about how the CTA is administered? No, not directly. Uh, we have a bu bully pulpit. We can uh, call for hearings, do resol uh, resolutions, get them to come in and talk about what it is that they're doing. Uh, but that is strictly within the province of the mayor. And the reason why I say that, the mayor appoints the people uh, to the CTA board. Um, but they, they, we do have some influence over some of the things that they can do, but not with respect to uh, their budgets. So if, if you are looking, for example, uh, a local alderman would want to move a bus stop from one side of the street to the other, uh, bus shelters, that type of thing, we have greater influence. But if we're talking about how they spend their money and their budget, not as much, even though the city does contribute couple million dollars a year directly towards CTA. And staying on the topic of the CTA, uh, you, you serve as chairman of the African American Caucus and, and the City Council. And I think one of the issues that you've advocated on recently is the uh, ex-offender rail car employment program with right. the CTA. And can you say a few words about that? Well, one, we're glad that it, the situation worked itself out, not the way we would have thought. And so essentially they had to eliminate those workers from the rail, put those workers on the bus because the rail uh, union just wasn't having it. Um, one, we think that if, if we're going to make more and more crimes in this state felonies, and what I mean by that is that when I first started practicing law some 25 years ago, uh, driving while your license was suspended or revoked was only a misdemeanor. Now under certain circumstances that can be a felony. Everybody knows that once you get a felony conviction in your background, uh, it is hard for you to find employment. If you can't find employment and you are a criminal, then it leads to, to the logic would go that you would tend to want to support yourself or your family or your habits. And if you can't find gainful, lawful employment, that you're going to go back to your old ways. And so it is really important that we're able to uh, have some means that the people can rehabilitate themselves and also uh, take care of uh, their families and themselves and buy things that they want in a legal means. This was a great program by everybody's uh, account of it, and it was just sad that it had to come down to that showdown between uh, the CTA uh, president and uh, the union president. You mentioned crime, and, and you've been a, a big advocate of public safety and reducing gun violence. And mm -hmm. I think last week marked the one-year anniversary of the passing of Hydea Pendleton. Uh, how do you think the city is doing in, in combating uh, well, violence, in particular gun violence? As far as the statistics go, uh, crime is down. Uh, but th the question is not necessarily statistics. It's about a feeling in a community. And if you don't feel safe, then you're not safe. And, and there's nothing that I can do. There's no statistics that I can show uh, senior citizens when I'm sitting and talking to them in their basements at their uh, block club meetings uh, to get them to believe that they're safe if they just don't feel that they're safe. Um, we in the city council have been uh, advocating and pushing for more police officers. And uh, we personally think that it is unsustainable with respect to uh, paying these police officers all of these hundreds of millions of dollars in overtime. Uh, I don't think that that is a long-term fix to our problem. 
Uh, with that said, we also understand what the mayor is saying with respect to uh, pension and pension obligations and hiring more uh, police officers also means that you have increased obligations with respect to uh, pensions and also it's almost baked into the deal that every time you hire a police officer you're going to pay some overtime because once they make an arrest when they go to court they're being paid overtime. So it's a complicated formula. Hopefully we can work these things out with respect to the next police contract and be able to hire more police and, and therefore not rely on uh, police officers getting all of this additional overtime. You're watching Political Forum. This is a live interactive call-in program. Uh, we invite you to flex your activism muscles by calling in with your questions uh, for Alderman Brookins. Uh, I think we have a caller on the line. Caller, are you there? Yes. Hello? Yes. Hi. You have a question? Yes. You have a question? Yes, I Go for it. Yes, I wanted to know what uh, is Alderman Brookins doing regarding uh, TIF funding? Uh, money is going towards DePaul University, private university. Uh, a lot of times on the south side, not any real retail growth or, you know, things. And, and that it goes with jobs. Uh, if there's no jobs in the community, what's uh, happening regarding TIF funding that should be going? It's supposed to be, you know, TIF tax increments financing for, uh, uh, you know, areas that are don't have growth or kind of uh, less than, you know, economically developed areas, and what's he doing regarding that? No, I, I, I agree with you. I, I think that um, some of the ways that TIF has been used based on how it is mandated to be used from the state government, uh, that law needs to be changed, and I have been advocating that along with uh, other members of our caucus. Um, the, the problem is that the money created in that TIF by law has to be spent and used within that same TIF district. Uh, in order for a TIF to be ported or moved from one TIF district to the other, those two TIF districts would actually have to adjoin and, and touch each other in order to port it to an additional TIF. Uh, with that said, then, there would be no way to get monies in a TIF that are in the downtown and South Loop TIF all the way out to the south side or all the way out to the west side unless we created a new super TIF district and kind of ran it down to Dan Ryan like we ran uh, our city border uh, down, the uh, down the Kennedy in order to say that O'Hara was still in, in the city of Chicago. Uh, so we do need a change in the law. Uh, I think that TIFs need to be used in truly blighted areas. I would like to, to see more of that ability used in places like Inglewood and Arvum Gresham uh, and Austin and other places that really could use and need the money. But we believe that it is going to take a change in the state law in order to do it uh, effectively to really help those truly blighted areas. You're watching Political Forum. This is a live interactive call-in uh, call show. Uh, Alderman Brookins is ready for your questions and your comments. Uh, I think we have another caller on the line. Uh, caller, are you there? Okay, I think we lost that caller. Um, so the, the issue of uh, TIFs uh, uh, came up, and let's talk about the, the future of Chicago and some other major uh, projects that have been floated. Um, one is the casino. Are, are you in favor of a casino in Chicago? And, and if yes, do you have thoughts about where that casino might be located? Right there in the 21st Ward. <laughs> <laughs> no, I am in favor of a casino. And, and I think that, uh, one, we, we have since found out anecdotally that just by telling people, no, don't spend your money, don't go to casinos, don't smoke, don't do this, doesn't work all the time. And so uh, if people want to gamble and if uh, our dollars of the people who want to gamble are being leaked out of our community to, uh, if you live on the south side, is going to Indiana or is going to Des Plaines or, or some of the other neighboring communities that actually have uh, uh, casinos there, then why not build a casino in the city of Chicago? It will help us with our tourism. It will help us... Uh, generate revenue for the city of Chicago and stop the leaking that is there. Uh, I think that it probably makes sense that it be somewhat centrally located, uh, rightfully or wrongfully, as much as I would love for it to be in the 21st Ward. Um, 
some of the sentiments about various neighborhoods that people don't hear about all the time are correct. And uh, you heard the French prime minister, a foreign minister, say that uh, if you go to Chicago, don't go past uh, 55th Street, essentially, or past the University of Chicago. So with that said, I think that it does need to be centrally located so that if you are a tourist, uh, you could get to it rather easily within the downtown, uh, near north, near west, uh, near south area. You mentioned tourism and another uh, potential uh, project uh, that could draw travelers from across the globe to Chicago is the President Obama uh, Library and Museum. And now, I do have strong thoughts with respect to that. And I believe that that uh, should be uh, in the city and not at the University of Chicago. And I know that there's a joint committee and I know that the University of Chicago is pushing hard to have it somewhere located within that campus. The reason said is that uh, for the same thing, reasons that the French foreign minister said, uh, if you come to Chicago, uh, the University of Chicago, the Museum of Science and Industry is a significant draw as it is. Uh, why not put it in a location, uh, whether it's Pullman or, or you know, somewhere Chicago State, uh, somewhere that w an ordinary citizen coming to Chicago may not go to, to help those communities and those neighborhoods uh, be uplifted. I, I think that that would be the best for uh, our city and our community to, to really drive traffic and tourism all over the city as opposed to being in a concentrated area. We have a note from a, a caller that uh, uh, phoned in earlier, and the question is, why do you support the building of Horizon Science Academy uh, when other schools uh, are close by? Horizon? A concept charter school? Not sure. I'm, I'm not sure about Horizon. Um, there's a project on 87th and the Dan Ryan, the South Sheen Carson L'Oreal project. Uh, it's also known as FEED from uh, Pastor Jenkins with Fellowship Church. It is a 250,000 square foot uh, building that is being redeveloped. Uh, Concept Charter Schools is one of the tenants uh, in that particular project. Uh, when the project was uh, first proposed uh, by uh, Pastor Jenkins, they needed an, another significant anchor, anchor for that particular project and they chose Concepts which will be a STEM school right there on the south side of Chicago. But not only is it the charter school, but it is also a medical facility. It is also an auditorium. It is also a, um, a community center. It is also his sanctuary. Uh, and so it is a synergy of businesses within that area, and we uh, desperately need jobs and development along the south side of Chicago, and that is why I support uh, that particular project and uh, Pastor Jenkins at the South Sheen Carson, or formerly South Sheen Carson L'Oreal building on 87th and the Dan Ryan. I think we have another caller on the line. Caller, are you there? Uh, yes, I am. I'd like to continue the conversation concerning uh, charter schools. Um, people say that uh, to make Chicago an elite uh, city, it starts with the kids. And uh, just last month, seven charter schools you know, were approved. Are charter schools, is that the future for Chicago, or what's your take on it? I'm not sure. The statistics that I have been shown and have been privy to say that actually charter schools do more damage to parochial schools than they do to uh, CPS schools. Uh, I, I know that uh, in high school I went to Mendel Catholic and that more uh, Catholic high schools and, and grammar schools are closing as opposed to uh, new ones opening up in, in various areas. So I, I think that um, the, the charter schools may not be the be-all, end-all, but I do believe that uh, people uh, will seek choices and what is in the best interest for uh, their individual family, uh, whether it is the neighborhood, the curriculum, uh, et cetera. And I, I, I think that that is not necessarily a bad thing, that, that people be given certain options with respect to their kids' education. Uh, we'd like to thank our guests for today, Alderman Howard Brookins, Jr. from the 21st Ward. Alderman, thanks for joining us again. Oh, thanks for having me. Uh, please also, the uh, City of Chicago Black Caucus, Aldermanic Black Caucus, also has a forum right here on the same station every third uh, Wednesday at 8 o'clock. Please tune in. One of my colleagues from the various African-American wards will be on uh, to talk about 
uh, the topics of the day and what's going on in their area. In order for our democracy to thrive, we need an informed and engaged citizenry. So we'd like to thank you for tuning in. We'd like to thank you for calling in. And we'd like to invite you to join us next week uh, for the next edition of Political Forum. Thank you. Thank you.